Poems Every Child Should Know, edited by Mary E. Burt. Section 19, read for LibriVox.org by Kara Schallenberg. This section contains two poems, The Sandpiper and Lady Clare. Part 2 continued. The Sandpiper. The Sandpiper by Celia Thaxter, 1836-1894, is placed here because a goodly percentage of the children who read it want to learn it. Across the lonely beach we flit, one little sandpiper and I, and fast I gather bit by bit the scattered driftwood, bleached and dry. The wild waves reach their hands for it, the wild wind raves, the tide runs high, as up and down the beach we flit, one little sandpiper and I. Above our heads the sullen clouds scud black and swift across the sky, like silent ghosts in misty shrouds stand out the white lighthouses high. Almost as far as eye can reach I see the close-reefed vessels fly, as fast we flit along the beach, one little sandpiper and I. I watch him as he skims along, uttering his sweet and mournful cry, he starts not at my fitful song, nor flash of fluttering drapery. He has no thought of any wrong, he scans me with a fearless eye. Stanch friends are we, well tried and strong, the little sandpiper and I. Comrade, where wilt thou be to-night, when the lucid storm breaks furiously? My driftwood fire will burn so bright, to what warm shelter canst thou fly? I do not fear for thee, though wroth the tempest rushes through the sky. For are we not God's children both, thou, little sandpiper, and I? Celia Thaxter Lady Clare Girls always love Lady Clare, and the Lord of Burley. They like to think that it is enough to be a splendid woman without title or wealth. They want to be loved, if they are loved at all, for their good hearts and graces of mind. Tennyson, 1809-1892, makes this point repeatedly through his poems. It was the time when lilies blow, and clouds are highest up in air. Lord Ronald brought a lily-white doe to give his cousin Lady Clare. I trow they did not part in scorn. Lovers long betrothed were they. They too will wed the morrow morn, God's blessing on the day. He does not love me for my birth, nor for my lands so broad and fair. He loves me for my own true worth, and that is well, said Lady Clare. In there came old Alice the nurse, said, Who was this that went from thee? It was my cousin, said Lady Clare. To morrow he weds with me. Oh, God be thanked, said Alice the nurse, that all comes round so just and fair. Lord Ronald is heir of all your lands, and you are not the Lady Clare. Are ye out of your mind, my nurse, my nurse, said Lady Clare, that ye speak so wild? As God's above, said Alice the nurse, I speak the truth. You are my child. The old earl's daughter died at my breast. I speak the truth, as I live by bread. I buried her like my own sweet child, and put my child in her stead. Falsely, falsely have ye done, O mother, she said, if this be true, to keep the best man under the sun so many years from his due. Nay, now, my child, said Alice the nurse, but keep the secret for your life, and all you have will be Lord Ronald's when you are man and wife. If I'm a beggar born, she said, I will speak out, for I dare not lie. Pull off, pull off the brooch of gold, and fling the diamond necklace by. Nay, now, my child, said Alice the nurse, but keep the secret all ye can. She said, Not so, but I will know if there be any faith in man. Nay, now, what faith, said Alice the nurse, the man will cleave unto his right. And he shall have it, the lady replied, though I should die to-night. Yet give one kiss to your mother, dear, alas, my child, I sinned for thee. O oh, mother, 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 she said, so strange it seems to me. 
yet here's a kiss for my mother dear, my mother dear, if this be so, and lay your hand upon my head, and bless me, mother, ere I go. She clad herself in a russet gown, she was no longer Lady Clare. She went by dale, and she went by down, with a single rose in her hair. The lily-white doe Lord Ronald had brought leapt up from where she lay, dropped her head in the maiden's hand, and followed her all the way. Down stepped Lord Ronald from his tower. O oh, Lady Clare, you shame your worth! Why come you dressed like a village maid, that are the flower of the earth? If I come dressed like a village maid, I am but as my fortunes are. I am a beggar-born, she said, and not the Lady Clare. Play me no tricks, said Lord Ronald, for I am yours in word and deed. Play me no tricks, said Lord Ronald. Your riddle is hard to read. Oh, and proudly stood she up, her heart within her did not fail. She looked into Lord Ronald's eyes, and told him all her nurse's tale. He laughed a laugh of merry scorn, he turned and kissed her where she stood. If you are not the heiress born, and I, said he, the next in blood, if you are not the heiress born, and I, said he, the lawful heir, we two will wed to-morrow morn, and you shall still be Lady Clare. Alfred Tennyson End of section 19 Read by Kara Schallenberg on October 16, 2006, in Oceanside, California.